Welcome to the last week in abnormal psychology. In this chapter, we're going to look at abnormal behavior across the lifespan. So these are looking at uh, disabilities that may occur in early childhood and could continue right on, or ones that seem to emerge at different points in one's lifetime. The psychological problems experienced by children and young people are often especially poignant that they affect children at a time in their lives when they have relatively little ability to cope. Some problems of childhood prevent children from reaching their potential. Other, um, others mirror the problems faced by adults. Finally, there are some pr um, problems that are unique to childhood um, or disorders that manifest themselves differently in children compared to adults. So what is considered normal or abnormal for children must be considered in light of developmental issues in addition to factors such as ethnicity or gender. So what is acceptable at one um, age becomes unacceptable as children grows older. So we're going to look at a variety of sort of conditions, some of which you'll be familiar with, and some that you might be surprised occur in childhood. And then, of course, in part two, we'll look at more of the experiences that can occur as we get older. Alrighty then, let's get on with this, and we're on to the last of two parts, so good luck. The first neurological disorder we're going to look at in this abnormal behavior across the lifespan is autism spectrum disorder. Now this involves Mark deficiencies in multiple areas of development. These deficits uh, develop within the first few years of life and are often associated with an intellectual disability. Now when we think in terms of the features of autism spectrum disorders, oftentimes some of the children shun um, affectionate behavior. They engage in repetitive and stereotypical behavior and attempt to preserve the sameness or engage in particular or peculiar, sorry, speech habits such as echolia, which is a repetitive of words, noun reversals, and idiosyncratic speech. Now, the cause of these disorders is unknown, and it's a lifelong condition. It is a spectrum disorder, therefore there's a range of severities, and you can see this on page 338 and page 339 under the diagnostic criteria in table 11.1. Theoretical perspectives back in the 1950s, uh, Kanner and Bettelheim, for example, looked at pathological family relationships. That is looking at the cold, detached parent and the effect that um, th that that relationship would have on the development of autism in some children. Now, this was a common position for many uh, psychological disorders, but research doesn't support this in blaming the parents anymore. Now, more currently, um, Ivar uh, Lovas, he's focused more on the perceptual deficits and to be able to process one stimuli at a time. Whereas cognitive therapists look at the relationship between integrating uh, information from various senses uh, and hypersensitivity and hyposensitivity to stimuli. This would impede what psychologists call the theory of mind hypothesis. And this is where we understand the separation and we accept the separation that there's a you and there's a me and that those are different. And with autistic children, sometimes that's blurred. That area is blurred. Now with MRIs scans, uh, we can show the differences between autistic and non-autistic brains um, included including the connective tissue between the two halves of the brain. These lateralization differences may also suggest a cause feature. Now we can include um, neurodevelopmental deficits and in this view that uh, there, there may be a genetic and therefore a chromosomal suspicion cause as well. And as you can see, and as will be consistent across the board in a lot of these uh, lifespan uh, disabilities, there's no cure, or at least there's not one um, currently, it's not to say there may not be in the future. Now, as far as treatment is concerned, um, intensive behavioral intervention, IBI, um, doesn't cure. However, 
these structured treatment programs have had some success, particularly when they've started early in the, bio, um, early in the child's development. The biological options are limited um, in their success. We don't know exactly, you know, medication doesn't have a profound impact on the, imp on the imp um, effect of autism. There have been some early successes with computer programs in teaching social skills and emotional recognition. Moving into intellectual disabilities. Intellectual disability refers to the general delay in the development of intellectual and adaptive abilities. Most cases fall in the mildly inte uh, intellectually disabled range. The DSM-5 uses three criteria in diagnosing intellectual disability. Uh, deficits in intellectual functioning as per standardized tests, like IQ tests, for example. Two, the evidence of impaired functioning in adaptive behavior, that is, how they interact and function within a day-to-day -day experience. And the onset of the disorder in a developmental period, that is, in early childhood. Now you can turn to page 392 in table 11.2 for the classification of developmental delay. Now when we think in terms of causes, Down syndrome is characterized by an extra or a third chromosome on the 25th, on the, sorry, on the 21st pair. There are recognizable physical features in heart and respiratory challenges for persons with this disability. Within the population of people with Down syndrome, learning and developmental deficits occur. Other chromo chromosomal abnormalities, including Turner's syndrome, where there's a single X chromosome instead of the usual two, or Kleinfelter's syndrome, where, where it's with males there's an extra X chromosome, so they were XXY. There's a variety of different sorts of conditions. Another cause uh, for intellectual disability is what is known as fragile X. And this is thought to be caused by a mutated gene on the X chromosome in the area that is fragile, therefore its name. It's the most common inherited intellectual disability. There are other forms that can cause intellectual disabilities, PKU, Tay-Sachs disease, or other examples that fit within intellectual disabilities. Now, savant syndrome, this refers to someone who has severe intellectual disabilities and possess a very remarkable mental ability. You know, two people that are very, uh, fairly well known in this field. There's many, actually. Uh, one is Stephen Whitshire. Uh, he uh, has a photographic memory. He doesn't look after himself particularly well. He has a lot of other deficits, but he could be flown over a city and come back in the next week, have uh, drawn out a very uh, detailed drawing of what he saw from memory. Uh, you may have seen The Rain Man as a movie. Um, Kim Peeks is who that movie is about. Kim Peeks uh, has a photographic memory and everything that he reads, he remembers. Plus, he has a rather remarkable way of reading. His left eye reads the left page, his right eye reads the right page. Now, if we carry on and look at some of the other factors that can influence intellectual disability, we find that some intellectual disabilities are caused by maternal uh, infections, things like rubella, uh, syphilis, um, a herpes virus that uh, uh, can be a part of what may contribute to intellectual disabilities, including substance abuse, things like alcohol, where you would have alcohol fetal syndrome or smoking. All during uh, pregnancy can be a, an issue uh, as far as developing various forms of intellectual disabilities. There are also what are known as cultural familial uh, causes. This can include in some cases where there's an impoverished home or the social environment is not uh, very intellectually stimulating and the parental neglect or abuse can play a role and are considered cultural, familial, intellectual disabilities. Children may lack toys, books, and opportunities to interact in intellectual ways. Now as far as intervention, well with appropriate training and support many children and adults uh, can participate in society in many different levels of aspects of what is normal. For many, through the use of mainstreaming, has exposed children, adolescents, and adults to normal experiences in the presence of the rest of society, and this gives them a, a positive role model for acceptable behavior. Another form of learning disorder, which um, is not an intellectual disability, and oftentimes gets associated or linked because they're under the same umbrella of learning disorder, and is that of learning disorders. People with learning disorders have normal to above normal intelligence and have a specific deficit in the development of either arithmetic, 
writing or reading skills. Now an example is dyslexia is the most common form of learning disorder. Dyslexia is a type of learning disorder characterized by impaired reading ability and may involve difficulties with alphabet and spelling. Now interventions mainly um, attempt at remediating specific deficit skills and the DSM-5 refers to them specifically um, as follows, impairments in mathematics, impairment in reading, and impairment in written expression. So if we look at some of the specifics, there's n these are not intellectual disorders. It's important to note that these are neurological in nature and therefore they are, me uh, they, uh, they are a measure of intelligence. If you see the reference uh, to the Canadian definition of learning disabilities on page 400 under the subheading there of a closer look. And you'll see this sort of example. Now the three main features of, dis uh, of learning disorders. The first one we'll talk about is impairment in mathematics or dyscalculia. Now this is a very unusual, very rare uh, learning disorder, but involves deficiencies in arithmetic skills, uh, significant troubles in understanding basic mathematical terms and operations, things like the plus sign for adding, the minus sign for subtracting, multiplication tables and such. It's not very common and it does not uh, include being anxious or not liking math. Um, that can be very debilitating, but it's not dyscalculia. Uh, you might not like math and you might struggle with it a bit, but the difference between dyscalculia and having anxiety about math are not the same thing. Now, if we look at another, which is called, uh, you know, the impairment of a written expression, dysgraphia is what this is called. And this is an impairment in written expression. This disorder exists even though the child may be a good reader. It can, affel, it can affect spelling, grammar, punctuation, or in creating sentences and paragraphs. Uh, one of the more common learning disabilities. And so it's important to note that as much as they may be able to read well, and then you see the way that they write and you go, well, that doesn't make sense. You should do better, work harder. It's, that's the part of the learning disorder that makes, makes it a struggle for the student as well. And then, of course, as was mentioned earlier, the impairment in reading, which is dyslexia. And there's just a difficulty in recognizing letters and words and con comprehending the written text. Now, some of the theoretical perspective. Um, neurobiological is a very, um, it, it is more and more of the research is looking at the possible uh, possibility of brain dysfunction as there are links to perceptual issues and brain dysfunctions. Uh, genetic um, factors where twin studies are supporting the genetic uh, connection. Higher rates of dyslexia are found between identical, uh, identical twins rather than um, fraternal twins at a 70 to 40 rate. Suspicion has fo focused on the role that a particular gene may play in causing subtle defects in brain circu uh, circuitry involving reading. As far as interventions, um, this leans towards supports and intervention strategies focus on the child's processing style and academic strengths, boosting the child's self-esteem, motivation, and other important skills. Um, in schools, use of the individual education plan and the transitional plan documents, high you know, elementary to high school and high school to post-school planning, a strategic plan for support, accommodations, compensatory skills, adaptive technology are all under consideration in the support for persons with learning disorders. This is going to be, bring to the end the first part at looking at abnormal behavior across the lifespan and we'll do part two and then we'll be completed. Carry on and keep up the good work everybody. Bye now.